The Caller by George Herbert. I struck the board and cried, No more! I will abroad. What? Shall I ever sigh and pine? My lines in life are free, free as the road, loose as the wind, as large as the store. Shall I be still in suit? Have I no harvest but a thorn to let me blood, and not restore what I have lost with cordial fruit? Sure there was wine, before my sighs did dry it. There was corn, before my tears did drown it. Is the year only lost to me? Have I no bays to crown it? No flowers, no garlands gay? All blasted, all wasted? Not so, my heart, but there is fruit, and thou hast hands. Recover all thy side-blown age, on double pleasures, leave thy cold dispute of what is fit and not, forsake thy cage, thy ropes of sand, which petty thoughts have made, and made to thee good cable to enforce and draw, and be thy law. While thou didst wink and wouldst now see, away, take heed, I will abroad. Call in thy death's head there. Tie up thy fears. He that forbears to suit and serve his need deserves his load. But as I raved and grew more fierce and wild at every word, methought I heard one calling, Child. And I replied, My Lord. So the speaker of the caller is an obviously religious man. He is most likely a priest or someone else within the church hierarchy. The occasion is that the speaker has some sort of existential crisis. He loses faith in God and he questions whether or not God is real as well as whether or not it's worth it to remain a part of the church and give up these mortal pleasures. The audience is some sort of third party. Um, it could be another priest or a confessional. It's interesting to note that most of the poem is within one very, very long extended quote. He's not the quote itself he might have said out loud to himself or to God, but he is saying it to someone else as if he said it in the past. So it's most likely in a confessional. The purpose is to show that no one can never truly escape the bondage created by religion and society, but also that... It is always worth it to go down the path of God. Towards the end, even though he has shunned and turned away from God, seemingly, he responds when God calls to him and seemingly goes back into his cage of religious servitude. The subject is this internal debate on whether or not to continue this life of religious piety or give in to the mortal pleasures of an everyday man. And the tone itself feels very split. It is sometimes accusatory or defensive. It's just shown mainly in the first half of the poem, in which the speaker utilizes many rhetorical questions, seemingly trying to shift the blame away from himself and his own guilty conscience onto God or society, or someone who isn't really there. In the second half, he shifts his tone, um, well, his syntax shifts to more uh, stated sentences, um, exclamations and realizations. This seemingly shows that he's taking responsibility for his decisions, whether or not he decides to remain with the church or not, and shows much more guilt than the first half of the poem.